Good afternoon. Welcome back to Unit 4. Today we are going to work on Section 2 in Chapter 7, um, the single trade discount. And so here we go. All right. So to be clear, this is Chapter 7 in your e-text or your physical textbook if you have one. Um, this is the second section. Single trade discounts, our goals for this section are as follows. The first thing we want to make sure you're able to do is recognize and or define a list price. It's important that you know what the list price is. We're going to define a trade discount. We want to be able to identify at least three reasons why a trade discount would be given. We want to calculate the trade discount amount and determine the trade discount rate. We will also be looking at the net price, what a net price is, how to calculate it, and what a net price factor means. We want you to be able to explain the relationship between a list price, a net price, and the trade discount, and how those three items are related to each other, as well as the net price factor and the trade discount rate. They also have a special relationship. Once we have all of that straightened out, um, what we would like for you to be able to do is given any of the two following pieces of information that you are able to calculate the other three. So between a list price, a trade discount, a trade discount rate, the net price, and the net price factor. Given any two pieces of information, you should be able to find the other three. All right. And so let's start. This is section seven, or I'm sorry, subsection 7.3. This is your single trade discount. Um, in order to start, we have to understand that the list price is what everybody starts with. It is the suggested retail selling price, and it's given by either the manufacturer of an item or a supplier. At this point in the course, we are not talking about any sort of consumable, not for you as a customer walking into Kohl's or Festival, but rather Kohl's or Festival purchasing from another business, all right? So when we say the list price, we're talking about the price that Kohl's would pay for the swimsuits or the vacuum cleaners or the price that Walmart is paying for the hula hoops and the lawn chairs. We're not talking about the price you or I pay when we walk into a store. Okay, the list price is known as the base price that is used by the seller. Oftentimes the seller will have or be able to give what's known as a trade discount. A trade discount is the dollar amount that the price is reduced by compared to the manufacturer's list price. So where do we give a trade discount? A trade discount is generally given along the route to the customer. So the manufacturer of the hula hoops might give a trade discount to Walmart if they buy a lot. As a matter of fact, there are several reasons for discounts. Three of the biggest reasons are first off a bulk sale. Um, Pepsi-Cola and festival foods, for example. It could be that Pepsi will offer festival a discount if they buy 250 cases or more they might get a trade discount. They could give a trade discount if Festival agrees to put the Pepsi 12-pack, um, 8-pack, liter, whatever, in their ad. Um, every week, the grocery stores put out an advertisement, either on the web or the physical paper. And if you agree as the grocery store to put that particular item into your advertisement, you might get an additional discount from your supply from your supplier. Um, the third reason, and this one is specific to grocery stores. Uh, I'll just be honest. Part of the reason I use grocery stores is because my father ran a grocery store for 40 some years of my growing up life. So much of what I know is in terms of grocery stores. It's, it's where I had my early retail experiences, right? I worked in grocery stores uh, for the first, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 years of my 
employable life. So grocery stores are what I'm most familiar with here. Uh, but the third reason that I can think of right off the top of my head is prime display place. Whether we're talking about a grocery store or um, Larson's General or maybe even, you know, Hot Topic, when you walk into the store, eye level is considered prime space. So is the front of the store. There's a difference. There's a whole marketing difference between left side and right side. I mean, it's just crazy. If you want some crazy information, Google how Target merchandises you. It's just nuts. Um, but there are several other reasons, and I'll bring other reasons as they come up uh, to the forefront. But these are the three main reasons, or not, these are three big reasons. They're not main. These are three big reasons why somebody might get a trade discount from a supplier. All right. Now there are single trade discounts and there are series of trade discounts. In other words, you could get just a single discount. That's just one of these three particular opportunities is offered for you as a way to get a discount for the business to get a discount. But there are also chain discounts. These are can occur when you have several different opportunities in one sale. Uh, maybe you're going to purchase the Pepsi, you're going to put it in your advertisement, and it's going to be right there in the front when you walk in to get your cart. So maybe in that case, Pepsi would offer you three different discounts, one for each. That would be a chain or series. What we're gonna be working on today is just a single discount. We just wanna get you used to the process, and then our next presentation will be on the chain or series discounts. So let's try some problems. So what is the amount of a trade discount on merchandise that has a list price of $2,800 and a trade discount of 18%? It's important to note that the list price is $2,800 and the discount rate, the trade discount rate is what we would call it officially, is 18%. Remember, rate is a percent. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the list price, which is 2800 and we're simply going to multiply that by our 18%. 0.18 as a decimal. When we multiply that out using the calculator, we get 504. Now, 504 is the amount of the discount. So it's very important as you read through these that you're careful about what they're asking for and what information you found. They have asked us for the amount of the trade discount and we figured out that that will be $504. So 504 is our answer. That is the amount of the trade discount. The second question says, Kitties Galore purchases $5,500 worth of merchandise and received a 22% discount from the wholesaler. What does Kitties Galore actually pay for this merchandise? So they didn't ask us for the discount. They asked us for something else. They asked us for what's called a net price. That is the amount that you will pay. So... The problem here is that we actually have to figure out what the discount is before we can tell anybody what's left to pay. So there are two methods of doing this particular problem. The first is to just go ahead and find the discount use and use subtraction to get to the price, the remaining payment. So the subtraction method or the first method, we're going to take the list price of 5,500 and multiply it by the 22%.22. This gives us a trade discount amount of $1,210. We will then need to subtract that discount off of the $5,500. So $5,500 minus the $1,210 gives us $4,290. This should be the amount left to pay. Now, there is a second subtraction method. And in the second subtraction method, well, okay, it's a presentation. I might not have been able to do this before, so we're just going to do it now. Uh, one of the things you don't know about me is that my mother is an accountant. And because my mother is an accountant, I had a lot of business stuff thrown at me young. One of the things what used to happen in my life is my mother would not let me purchase things. Okay, so I had to get a job early and I had to have my own money, but mom wouldn't let me purchase things unless I could tell her the price, which when you're a kid is really kind of rough, but it got me good at percents early. So 
if something was 22% off, my mother never cared about how much money off that was. It only mattered how much was then left to pay. So if it was 22% off, that 22% discount would have turned out that there was 78% of the price left to pay. So how did I get that 78%? I literally took 100%, which is what I would have had to pay initially, 100% of the cost, and it's a 22% discount. So I subtracted 22 from 100. That gave me 78%. 78 and 22 are what are known as complements. These are called complements because they are two numbers that add to 100. Now, you may remember something from geometry, that's a little bit different, but for our purposes, complements are two numbers that add to be 100. So, I'm going to use this complement, and I'm going to do 5,500 times the 0.78, because I'm going to have to pay 78% of that 5,500. This also gives me 4,290. In many cases, this subtraction method, the second one, is referred to as the complement method. And that's fine because we're using the complement of the discount. Notice that in both cases, we do get 4,290. All right. Okay, so the complement method leaves us with what's known as the net price. The net price is defined as the amount a business pays for merchandise after all the discounts have been applied. So when we take all of the trade discounts off of their price, what we're left with is known as the net price. Now, the net price is frequently of greater interest to a business than each deduction. In other words, let's just get down to brass tacks here. I don't want to know what all the discounts are going to be. I just want to know in the end, what percent am I going to end up paying? Am I going to end up paying 60% of your first price or 40% of your first price? That's what I want to know. That percent that we're talking about is called a net price factor. We can find the net price factor if we take 100% and subtract the discount rate or the discount percent. The net price factor is a representation of the percent that is paid. The main difference here is that the net price factor is most frequently written as a decimal and not as a percent. So we will write it as a decimal but we need to kind of sometimes think in terms of percents. So we've got to be able to have, it's, it's beneficial. I shouldn't say got to. It's beneficial if your brain is able to make that switch automatically between percent and decimal. So keep in mind that the net price factor and the discount are going to be complements. Again, this meaning that those two numbers will add up to 100. Why do we use a net price factor? Well, net price factors are important when you're dealing with repetitive calculations and consistent deductions. If I have, if I have a whole store full of inventory, or if we go back to that Pepsi example, how many different types of, pep, of soda does Pepsi sell, right? So I don't want to have to do this, the deduction each time for each different type of soda I'm buying. Maybe I just want to know what I need to multiply by to get that net price. And that'll be way faster. Well, at least it'll be easier to put into an Excel spreadsheet. All right, let's try a couple problems. We want to calculate the net price of merchandise listing for 18 or $18,000, less a trade discount of 34%, meaning we're going to take off a trade discount of 34%. Since I've been asked for the net price, I'm going to use the net price factor. 
and to find the net price factor, I'm going to take 100 minus the 34%. I'm going to take 100% minus the 34% trade discount, and that's going to leave me with 66%. The net price is found if you take the list price, which is the $18,000, and multiply it by the net price factor of 0.66. This gives us a net price of $11,800. Second one. Carla ordered $1,400 worth of snow shovels with a single trade discount of 11%. What is the net price on her order? Our net price factor would be the 100% minus the 11% discount, or 89%. Now, in my head, I'm already doing 89% is 0.89. That means that my net price will be the list price of 14,000, 1,400, sorry, not 1,000, 1,400 times the 0.89. This is 1,246. So my net price on, or Carla's net price on her order is $1,246. Okay. So in 7.5, we take a look at the trade discount and the trade discount rate. Take a moment to remember that the trade discount is the amount of the deduction in the manufacturer's list price. So trade discount is always about the money. All right. The trade discount rate, sometimes abbreviated as TDR, is the percent of the trade discount. So the trade discount when we just say trade discount, we mean the amount, the money. The trade discount rate will be a percent or a decimal. So rearranging the formula from chapter six, where we knew portion is equal to the rate times the base, we can discover the trade discount rate would have to be the portion divided by the base. In our case, the portion we're talking about is the trade discount amount, the trade discount in dollars divided by the list price in dollars. This will give us the trade discount rate. This is most frequently written as a percent, but occasionally they'll sneak it in as a decimal. Not very often, but most of the time it is going to be written as a percent. Now, keep in mind that if you know the trade discount and you know the net price, the relationship here is that the trade discount plus the net price have to add to be the list price because the trade discount rate and our net price factor, when I put them together, I have to get 100% of the cost. So whatever amount of money they took off, that's the trade discount. And whatever amount of money is left to pay, that's your net price. When you add them together, you have to get the original list price. And if we take the trade discount rate, that's the percent that was knocked off, and we take the net price factor, that's the percent left to pay, we have to get back to 100% of the list price. These relationships are important when we work through some of these remaining problems. So here we go. At Ace Hardware, where are we going? Come on now. At Ace Hardware, they're gonna order $2,300 worth of rakes. They're gonna pay a net price of $1,800. What was their trade discount rate? Okay, round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So they ordered $2,300 worth of rakes. That was their list. They paid a net price of $1,800. So if they were supposed to pay $2,300 and they ended up paying $1,800, we can calculate their trade discount. They received a trade discount in the difference between what the list price was minus the net price of $1,800. This gives us a trade discount of $500. Our trade discount rate, or the percent that this is, has to equal the portion, 
which is the trade discount in money, divided by the list price, or 500 over 2300, which when I plug that into a calculator, I get 0 0.21739130 to convert this to a percent, I will multiply by 100, and then I will need the tenths place. That would be 21.739, but the 3 is going to keep the 7 the same. So I'm at 21.7%. Net squared buys $122,000 worth of tennis rackets for $83,500. They got quite a deal. What was their net price factor? Well, I can do the same process again. Their trade discount was 122,000 minus 835 or 38,500. To get the trade discount rate, I can take that trade discount and divide it by the list price of 122,000 and that will give me 31. 0.6%, right? 0.31557377, which I would then multiply by 100 to get the percent. And if I'm rounding to the tenths place again, that would be 31.6. Now, keep in mind the trade discount rate and the net price factor have to add to 100. So the discount or the amount off and the net price factor, the amount left to pay, have to add up to be 100. So I can find the net price factor if I simply subtract the discount from 100 or 1. So this gives us 1 minus 0 0.31. I just keep a whole bunch of those. And I get the net price factor is 0 0.68442623 or 0.684. Okay, I know it can be a lot. I'll give you a minute to breathe. Okay, so one of our last bits here is an example where you're going to be asked to um, given two pieces of this information, can you find the other three? So I want to go through just a couple of these with you. I won't be able to go through every one of them, but this is great practice to get your brain to do the mental gymnastics. And um, it's one of my favorite things to do in class. You're kind of looking out. We're not doing it in class. Um, but yeah, so in the PowerPoint um, that this presentation is based on you can do these all by yourself if you would like um, but in the meantime i'm just going to do the first few rows here and talk you through them all right so we have got a list price of 860 with a trade discount rate of 30. i need to find the trade discount i need to find the net price and i need to find the net price factor let me add for a moment that order is not important it's not important at all. The order in which I do these will not necessarily be the same order that you will find them, and that is perfectly all right. All right, so here I go. I've got the list price and the trade discount rate. So I know I can find the trade discount if I take 860 times 30%, or 860 times 0.3. And if I do that, I will get $258. That's my trade discount. I know the list price minus the trade discount has to equal the net price of 602. So 860 minus the 258 will equal 602. The net price factor is still missing. And technically, I can find this two ways. The easiest way for me right now is to remember that the trade discount rate which we know is 30%, and the net price factor have to add up to be 100. So the trade discount rate is 30%. 100 minus 30 is 70. So my net price factor would be 70%, but I got to write it as a decimal, so that's 0.7. Woohoo! Second one. For the second one, I've been given the trade discount rate and the trade discount. 
So here's how I go. I'm going to get the easy one done first. Easy is relative, but I'm going to get the one that jumps out at me first. The trade discount rate is 40%. That means that the net price factor has to be the rest of the way to 100 or 60% but I write that as a decimal most of the time, so that's gonna be 0.6. Now, I need to find the list price. So the list price is our base. Just like what we were doing in chapter six, this is our base. So do you remember that little triangle? The base is equal to the portion divided by the rate. So I know the trade discount rate, and that's 53.92 for the trade discount. So I can take the 53.92 and divide it by 40%, and that will get me my original or my list price of 134.80. Once I know the list price of 134.80, now I can just subtract the trade discount amount, and that should get me my net price. So 134.80 minus 53.92 is going to be $80.88. Woohoo! All right, second row filled in. Let's do the third row. Okay, so for the third row, I've got a net a list price of twenty-one twenty-nine and a net price of seventeen forty-six. I've got to find the trade discount rate, the trade discount, and the net price factor. Any one of those could be found first but I'm gonna give you the one that sort of jumps out at me. And that is, if I have the net price and the list price, I can do 1746 divided by the list price of 2129, and that should give me my net price factor. Funny enough, it actually gives you your net price factor in decimal format already. So I'm okay with 0.82 here. Now, now that I know my net price factor is 0.82 or 82%, I know that my trade discount rate should be the rest of the way to 100. So if I do 100 minus 82, I'm going to get 18%. Once I know my trade discount rate, I can do 21.29 times 0.18 to get the amount of the trade discount, which is $3.83. Sweet. Okay, so there are seven more problems here for you to do on this, and feel free to take a look at them. I'm not going to run through all of them. I'm going to leave this up for you. And once again, you can find those in the assignments folder for this week for section 7.3 on the actual PowerPoint. Okay, so let's try a couple of just basic examples here. So here we have example one, a children's clothing store purchased merchandise with a total list price of $25,450 from SS Manufacturing. The order had a trade discount rate of 34%. What is the amount of the trade discount? To calculate the trade discount, we need to take the list price and multiply it by the trade discount rate. This will give us $25,450 times 0.34, which is 8,653. So the amount of the trade discount is that 8,653. How can we find the net amount that is owed to SS Manufacturing? This is just a subtraction problem. We're going to take the total amount, the 25,450, and subtract from it 8,653, which leaves us with $16,797. In our second example, we see a watch has a list price of $1,200 and can be bought at Rose Jewelers for $844. What's the amount of the trade discount? The trade discount would be the list price minus the sale price. So that's going to be $1,200 minus $844. That gives us $356. So the amount, the dollar amount of the trade discount is $356. The trade discount rate 
can be found by taking that trade discount amount, the dollars, and dividing it by the list price. This gives us $356 divided by 1200. What we get when we do that is 0 0.29 with a repeating six. Now, that repeating six is two thirds. So we have 0.29 and two thirds, which when we multiply by 100 to get a percent, we get 29 and two thirds percent. In some situations, this would be perfectly fine at 29.7%. It just depends upon what they wanted us to round to. The third example comes from your section two review exercises. This is problem number 26. It's setting up a situation where you are the buyer in the housewares department for the Galleria department store. Uh, a number of vendors in your area kill, carry similar lines of merchandise. You have been sent out to purchase 500 units of serving bowls for your store, and you have two options. In option number one, KM offers a list price of $40 per unit, plus a 38% trade discount rate on orders of 50 units or more. For offer number two, PC offers a list price of $45 per unit and a 45% trade discount rate on orders of 50 units or more. Which vendor is offering the lower net price? So in order to do that, we're going to look at KM's first. KM's net price would be the price per unit, or $40, multiplied by the net price factor. Since they've told us it's 38% off, or a 38% discount, I'm going to take that away from 100 to have 40 times 0 0.62. So 0.62 would be the net price factor. And when I multiply that through, I get $24.80. That's $24.80 per unit, or $24.50 for every 50 bowls. Taking a look at PC's net price, we see that their price per unit was $45, and they're giving a 45% trade discount. So they're giving a much better discount but their price is also considerably higher. So I'm gonna take their price per unit times their net price factor as well. Their price per unit was the $45. Their net price factor would be one minus 100% minus 45% or one minus 0.45. And we'd have 45 times 0.55, which is $24.75. We can see that after discounts, PC is the lower price. So whatever PC is, it is offering the lower price. So we're ordering, or you as the buyer, are ordering 500 bowls. How much will you save, or 500 bowls or 500 units? 500 units, that should be units. So let me fix that. We're not ordering 500 bowls. We're ordering 500 units, fixing, fixing. 500 units, there we go. Because a unit could be four bowls, like in a container, right? Like in a box, think about a unit like in a box. It could be, um, there could be four bowls in a box, there could be six bowls in a box, who knows? All right, so you're gonna order 500 units. How much will you save using the lower price? Uh, PC is a lower price by five cents. How do I know that? I'm just doing a subtraction problem to find the difference. If I take 2480 minus 2475, we'll see that we're saving five cents each unit, whatever that unit may be. And if I do five cents times the 500 units I'm meant to purchase, then the savings is $25. It's not a ton of savings, but you know, if you're in a business, every little bit helps, every little bit costs. All right. So that's the last example in this particular section of 7.3. So with the single trade discounts now, um, we want to review and make sure that you can do the following. Can you explain what a list price is? Could you recognize one if there's one in the problem? Can you define a trade discount 
and identify three reasons why a trade discount could be, reason, could be given. Can you calculate the trade discount amount and determine a trade discount rate? Can you define what a net price is and determine a net price factor? Can you explain the difference or the relationship, sorry, not difference. Can you explain the relationship between a list price, a net price, and a trade discount? And a net price factor and a trade discount rate. How is the net price factor and the trade discount rate related? And as you saw in that one intensive PowerPoint slide that I had there, given two pieces of information between the list price, the trade discount, the trade discount rate, the net price, and the net price factor, do you feel sufficiently confident that you could find the other three? Now, if you would like extra practice, you can find it in your e-text in chapter seven, at the end of chapter seven, section two, Yep, end of chapter seven, section two. This is review exercises one through 27. Um, the extra practice for this, if you have a physical copy of the book, is on pages 201 to 204. There is a graded assignment available on WebAssign. This is chapter seven, section two. I was not at all creative with the title. The title of this graded assignment is chapter seven, section two. And as always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me, your instructor, your math support personnel, the math center, or any of our available tutors. All right? Thank you. Good luck.